Good morning. I hope everything's well with you today. We are at the last paragraph of 1 John, and we ended at verse 13 yesterday. I want to talk about verse 13 in the following context today, and then tomorrow we'll wrap the whole book up. But today we're going to look at a passage that is, is, um, it has always been troublesome to interpreters. So let me read to you the paragraph. And then we'll talk about the issue, and you'll recognize that immediately. If you want to get your Bibles out, go ahead and do that. Verse 13, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. We talked about that yesterday. And this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So John goes into prayer now, and, and, he, and he speaks the obvious here. If we ask God for anything, according to his will, he hears us. God is not a divine you know, um, store that simply hands out what you want. If it's according to his will, he hears us and you'll get that. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have asked for. Verse 16, here is the, here is the troublesome passage about prayer. If anyone sees his brother committing a sin not leading to death, he shall ask him and God will give him life to those who commit sins that do not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death. I do not say that one should pray for that. So we'll come back to that in a second and try and, and ask the question, what does that mean? All wrongdoing, verse 17, all wrongdoing is sin, but there is a sin that does not lead to death. We know that everyone who has been born of God does not keep on sinning, but he who was born of God protects him, and the evil one does not touch him. We know that we are from God and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. Let's stop there and we'll, we'll kind of wrap up 1 John with these last few verses tomorrow. But I want to come back to that phrase there in verse 16 or that statement. If anyone sees his brother, so John's using the word brother, which is presumably his term for a Christian, committed a sin that, that does not lead to death, will ask God, intercede for him, and God will give him life. But he, reiter he reiterates it. Now, I'm referring to those who commit sins that do not lead to death. But there is a sin that leads to death, John says, and I'm not suggesting you pray for that one. He's not saying don't pray for it. He's simply saying, I'm talking about the sin that doesn't lead to death. I'm not talking about the sin that does lead to death. Now, this raises so many questions, and I, I'm not going to answer them today. In part, I, I'm still working through my opinions on this, my understanding, because I can flip-flop either way. I'm going to present two options to you. They're a bit simplistic. And I want you to think about them, and I want you to get back to me about what you think the interpretation is. This is where, instead of just listening to me, I want you to engage the Scriptures, talk to God about it, and, and put some thoughts down for me. Sin not leading to death. So, what kind of sin is it? What, what, what could possibly be the sin? John doesn't tell us the sin. And then that, that leads to death or does not lead to death. So what kind of death is it? He talks about is a sin that does not lead to death and God will give them life. What is the death and life? Is it talking about spiritual death and spiritual life? Meaning spiritually you were alive before God or not saved or not saved? Is it talking about a brother who has the life? and commits this sin, but then God takes that life away and gives them death, but your prayers can stop that? So essentially talking about losing their salvation. Or is this talking about physical life and death? That, that there's a sin that, that leads to death, physical death. I'm not talking about that one, John says. I'm talking about the sins that don't cause your physical death. Um, so this disturbs some people in that the idea, you mean God might kill one of his own children? And that, that can be disturbing, but we have to look at all the scripture on that one. You got Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter 5, presumably Christians. They're part of the community. They fall over dead because they lied to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the, the Corinthians were abusing communion. And Paul says, a number of you are sick and weak and even asleep, meaning dead, because of their abuse of communion. So there's, there's other examples about this that, that it appears, but 1 Corinthians 5. Paul says, turn that man, an immoral man that's presumably sleeping with his stepmother, a uh, disgusting thought, turn that man over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh. Is that talking about losing his salvation or physical death? The scriptures have examples where God disciplines people to the point of death. So which one's he talking about here? Spiritual life and death 
The wages of sin is death. That's both. It's both physical and spiritual. Adam and Eve were excluded from the presence of God. That was the spiritual death, and they eventually died, the physical death. So which one is John talking about? A sin leading to death, physical death or spiritual death? I want you to look at it. Give me your thoughts. Email me at Tony, Tony at cornerstonecommunity.net, or go to my Facebook page and put your thoughts there. So I'd um, love to hear your thoughts, and we'll wrap this up tomorrow. The whole book of 1 John will wrap up tomorrow.